Good morning. Uh, so what are we doing here today? We are talking all things natural gas. So I'm Dustin Meyer. I'm the vice president of natural gas markets at the American Petroleum Institute. What is it? Where does it come from? What do we use it for? What role does it have in energy security for us here in the United States and around the world? And what role does it have in meeting the dual future challenge of how do we meet existing energy demand and rising demand while still simultaneously reducing emissions? Let's get started. In the US, about 40% of natural gas goes to power generation. About 30% of it goes to residential use, so think in your cooking, but primarily for heating during cold weather. And then the third would be industrial applications. So that is how gas in the United States is used. And natural gas is just an inherently much cleaner molecule. So when you use natural gas to generate electricity, you get about a 50% emissions reduction from the GHG side, from the greenhouse gas side, as opposed to coal. But it actually extends beyond that. We justifiably spend most of our time talking about carbon dioxide emissions, right? GHG emissions. But there's also a huge reduction in uh, SOx and NOx and particulate matter. Natural gas has offers a sharp reduction, in, in many instances, a near total elimination of those types of emissions. But it creates a very flexible, uh, reliable uh, energy market that ultimately, at the end of the day, we as consumers uh, can rely on. Liquefied natural gas, as the name suggests, it's the same molecule. It's still natural gas. It's still methane. It's just effectively run through a massive refrigerator that brings it down to a liquid form. When you move it into a liquid form, that means it's much more energy dense. That means that you can ship it on a vessel across the ocean in a way that wouldn't really be feasible if you just left it at a gas. We started exporting liquefied natural gas back in 2016. We are now the world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas. It is very important to remember how we got here. It wasn't that long ago when not only was the United States a major importer of LNG, we were actually projected by many to be the world's largest importer of LNG. What we're looking at here is the fairly dramatic rise in exports of liquefied natural gas from the United States. You can see those started in early 2016 and have increased steadily all the way to the present day. Russia has always been the largest supplier of natural gas to Europe. About 40% of Europe's natural gas supply has always come from Russia. So it's a really bad situation. But what's important to remember is that it actually could be a lot worse. The reason why it's not worse is largely due to the role that US natural gas and especially American liquefied natural gas or LNG is playing in displacing that Russian pipeline gas. US LNG flows to Europe have increased significantly. That fundamental shift, it didn't happen overnight, but it also didn't happen by accident. This was the result of decades of innovation in the industry. That's what enabled all of this to happen. That's what enabled the United States to now play the role that it is playing in global energy markets. We really do face a dual challenge when we think about the future of energy. How do we continue to meet existing and future demand for energy of all forms while reducing emissions in a manner consistent with our climate targets? Natural gas really does have an important role to play in doing this, and here's why. One of the largest success stories that we have is the emissions reductions that we've seen in the US power sector. And what you can see is that over the last 15 years, those emissions have actually declined quite precipitously. And when we talk about renewable energy, we're primarily talking about the use of renewable energy in the power sector. So as wind and solar generation fluctuates wildly on a minute to minute basis, it's really only natural gas that can balance that electricity generation and ensure that these grids operate reliably. I think that many folks in the policymaking community perhaps are starting to understand 
is if you restrict and limit the availability and the abundance of natural gas, you really do set yourself up into a precarious position. Going forward, we're gonna have to invest in new supply, in building new infrastructure. We should be eyes open about the challenge ahead. The United States is uniquely blessed in terms of our energy resources. We have to remember that the, while there are so many global benefits, the, the primary beneficiary of our development of our natural gas resources in supplying this abundant natural gas is the United States. It lowers costs for consumers. It uh, supports a tremendous amount of job creation across the United States, and it offers tremendous economic benefits to local communities all around the country.